There are plenty of cool-sounding terms in science, like hysteresis and transconductance, but one of my favorites that I've come across is persistence of vision. An actual term. LEDs and the human eye and brain have a little agreement. If you blink an LED fast enough, the brain sees it as a solid light, not as blinking. And it's proportional to how much it's been on during that time. So if it's blinking on for more time than it's off, it'll appear brighter. And if it's blinking on for less time than it's off, like duty cycle of a square wave, it'll appear dimmer, but it'll still be, if it's fast enough, it'll still be a solid light. Mechanically, you can't do this with incandescent bulbs because you'll just shorten their lifespan and they'll just pop early. And technically, the same thing happens with an LED, but LEDs are so stable as solid state devices that the amount you're shortening the life of the LED is beyond its normal operating span anyway. Another thing is you can use this to drive it brighter than it it should be, because you can put too much current through it, which is going to heat it up and make it pop, but then you turn it off and it cools down, and hot and cool and hot and cool. So, again, this shortens the life, but it's not going to shorten it enough. This is not the same, it's related, but it's not the same as talking about like the, the frame rate of a game, or how fast the monitor refreshes, because part of that is input latency, but part of that is the, the change. It's detecting changes in motion and such. What I'm talking about is a solid blinking, and the brain requires much lower frequencies to detect that as a solid light, or to interpret that as a solid light. So not only can we exploit this to drive an LED brighter than it should be, but we can exploit it to drive 64 LEDs without having to have 64 pins. The 8x8 LED matrix I showed you, the 1088AS, I've done a simple demonstration here where I just plug it into an Arduino using 16 pins and 8 resistors. It's good for a demonstration and it's good for testing because you could get a bunch of these panels and just pop it in and it'll show you whether each light is on. But it's also good for experimenting. You know, there's no reason to go through a whole bunch of hassle with drivers and shift registers and all this other stuff when you're just trying to, let's say, test out a pattern. You want to try out different patterns and see how they go. So we'll get into the fancy proper stuff in the future right now. Let me just show you this. So here is the LED matrix, and I've got a simple program that turns them all on one at a time and turns them all off one at a time just to show them all in a very clear and easy way. I've got the 16 pins plugged in over here just to get them in a sensible order, and then I've got a breadboard over here which has got eight pins for the columns that are being driven positive, and eight pins for the rows that are being driven negative, and the resistors are on the negatives. At any particular moment, one of the column pins is going to be high, and any number of the row pins is going to be low. Otherwise, it'll be high impedance. You could also drive it high, because high and high would be zero volts, but I just don't turn it on. And I've got whatever resistors in here. I forget what value, but you would just change the resistor based on the brightness you want. So the whole point of this is to show, and hopefully it's showing up on the camera correctly because the camera has a shutter speed. It's not acting the same way as a human eye would, so you may see flicker. We'll find out when I edit this video. But to my eye, there is no flicker whatsoever, even though it's only drawing a column at a time. And that's the great part is it's going rows. I've got it sideways, so it's doing a row at a time, but it's illuminating a column at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll show you the code at the end. But it's just, it's just doing one at a time and flashing and it's working perfectly fine. Nothing novel here. We've known this for decades, but it's just cool to see in action. And it doesn't draw that much current. These things are bright out of all proportion. Again, I think it's because they're in little divots, so more of the light is coming up, but it's being driven directly by the Arduino, and this is like a couple milliamps for the whole thing, just a handful of milliamps for the entire thing on at the same time. It's great. So anyway, just a simple little demonstration of how you can drive any pattern on a matrix like this and use the flashing to your advantage. So let me show you the simple code. So I allocate a simple array to give me the numbers of the eight column pins and eight row pins, just so I don't have to hard code any of that. And on delay is the number of microseconds that I'm going to leave the LEDs on. I'm basically going to just switch rows as fast as I can, and each row, once I've 
set the pins, I'm going to wait 100 microseconds. I think I said microseconds. Anyway, it's microseconds. It would really be smart to put it in the variable name, but anyway, 100 microseconds. And then here is the ones and zeros that represent the pattern I'm going to draw at any particular time. And here, pattern lifetime is 50 milliseconds, so I'm going to change the pattern being displayed every 50 milliseconds. And then this is just for my timer code. And this, this is just the code. Don't, don't worry about this. This just creates the pattern. You can put whatever code you want here. Examine this if you like. But the point of it is down here. So when we start, I call initialize pattern first, which is whatever my code wants to do. And then I start the timer. So whatever the current time is, I say, OK, that'll be the next change. So it's just every pattern lifetime, it'll call update pattern. So the actual code, the meat of the program is here. So it iterates over each of the columns, and it turns on that column pin. So one column, the positive pin, is on at a time. It's being, again, it takes very little current, so it's being driven directly by the output pin. You want to make sure for your microcontroller whether you can do this, but if it's an Arduino, yes, you'll be able to do this. That's part of the charm of the Arduino. This is not going to take anywhere near too much current. So anyway, I set it to output mode and I turn it to high. Then for every single row, these are the ones that are being driven negative, connect, well not negative, but to ground, but you get the idea, the cathodes. So the low signal, output low, and these are the ones connected with the resistors. You have to have a separate resistor for each one. Otherwise, if you have one resistor, I've gone over this, but if you have one resistor, sometimes the LEDs won't turn on right. And also, the brightness will depend on how many in the column are on. You don't want that, so one resistor per row. So it turns on all the ones that are on in the pattern variable. Then it waits for the number of microseconds in the on delay, turns off all of the row pins, turns off the column pin, and then it checks whether it's time to update the pattern. If so, update pattern and do the next iteration. So this is going to spin as fast as possible, 100 microseconds plus execution time. And it's a little variable, actually, because the execution time is a little variable, but 100 microseconds, if we, if we ignore the execution time, 100 microseconds is about 10 kilohertz. Like 10 kilohertz. So it's not going to be that because I have the code running, but the human eye, you know, once you get over 200 hertz, it's literally impossible for a human to tell. Many humans won't be able to tell anywhere near that high. But like 200 hertz or more, you're not going to see it. So 10 kilohertz or on the order of 1 kilohertz even will be fine. So even though there is a variable execution time, that is just going to slightly change the brightness. I should do a video in the future on the fine control of an LED with PWM. But anyway, there will be extremely slight variable brightness due to the variable execution time, depending on, you know, how many pins it needs to change per column. But otherwise, it's super simple code, a column at a time, just to demonstrate how incredibly easy it is because the brain just smooths it out. It's not the eye, it's the brain. The brain's processing does this. This is why we have optical illusions, because what the eye sees is not what we see. But anyway, in the future, I'll do real examples with real hardware. But this little program is great for testing because you can just, you know, plug and unplug the modules in a breadboard and make sure all the lights work on them. So there you go. So have fun, and I will be seeing you.